Welcome to the August 10th, 2023 Harmon City School Bo uh, District Board of Education meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Mr. Dusso. Mr. Bratz. Present. Mr. Rudolph. Present. Mrs. Short. Present. Mr. Vaughn. Present. Dr. Smalley, can you please confirm this meeting is currently being live streamed? Yes, it is. Thank you. Can you please monitor the live streaming throughout the meeting? And if there is a problem, please speak up immediately so that technical difficulty can be addressed. Yes, we will. Thank you, sir. This brings us to the information of the board, Dr. Smiley. <coughs> I appreciate the, uh, the forum. Mr. President, a few things that we want to clarify from our last meeting, uh, and I think they're pretty important uh, points of clarification. First, when we passed the resolution that allowed us to arm staff, uh, we want to uh, be very clear that that was the first of several steps that we would have to take before anyone would actually uh, carry beyond the police uh, men and women who actually work in our buildings. Um, so. There was always the resolution followed by one policy reading, followed by a second policy reading. So that was really the first step of a three-step process to actually arm uh, anyone on staff. Uh, as uh, anyone who was able to get my email, uh, so parents, certainly staff members, know that uh, we discussed in executive session this evening, um, as we're allowed to under Highway Revised Code, um, just the steps we wanted to take from, from this point. There is nothing on tonight's agenda relevant to arming staff. We pulled that so that we could have further uh, discussion uh, around some of the concerns that we had heard. Uh, we had never had any intent to arm teachers. Uh, and I think that's, that's important to say. Um, we understand how uh, the resolution was uh, explained in some media outlets, uh, and we understand that I uh, personally didn't do the best job of communicating. Um, I've always been sort of the chief spokesperson for our school district and um, at the time we were really under uh, sort of some, some leadership and some counsel from uh, our, 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 our chiefs, uh, our security consultants who said that there is some type of you know, advantage to mystery uh, of who may or may not be carrying and we were honoring that. Um, since that time we have clearly learned that the gain of some type of mystery of who might be armed in comparison to the loss of us really honoring our second district goal, uh, which is you know, to be as transparent as possible across our communities, just didn't, didn't match at all. Uh, we were not really gaining nearly as much as we were losing as a school district uh, in terms of credibility. Uh, we will proceed with a policy uh, at our next board meeting with some very specific uh, clauses that will answer many questions about who and what and where and how and, and, and training and mental health and, and all of those different concerns uh, that we're grateful to have heard uh, from our, our, our communities. Uh, understand that we also always plan to answer those uh, as we went through the policy steps, uh, but as we go through the next two meetings, uh, we will continue to, to attend to those. It will be our security team only uh, that we are pursuing to arm our security team only at this time that we would be arming and I think it's important that uh, we explain that. Uh, that was always the intent, we always intended to uh, begin with them and again at the time uh, when we weren't very specific about who we were arming, it was under the leadership of saying that there was some, some gain to mystery. So we are now uh, clarifying that it was always intended to be security, um, the, the resolution was always the first step, we will now come back with two additional meetings uh, to clarify in policy. We encourage uh, anyone who wants to be involved in that process, and we have uh, a way for folks to comment about anything on the agenda uh, at our meetings. You can also participate in three minutes at the end to really comment on anything. So hopefully this is clarifying uh, our intent and the process that we intended to uh, engage in. We will clarify this again in writing to our staff as well, to our community uh, through a release as well. So I appreciate the forum. Uh, I again want to um, address the fact that there were missteps in communication, I own those, uh, and we are certainly learning from that. And uh, with that, sir, that concludes our comments. Right. Thank you, Dr. Smiley. Uh, brings us communications, Mr. Kratz. I do have a couple of items. Um, I'm hopeful that some of you might have had the opportunity to attend our 
Sound of Music. It was a district-wide um, musical that was presented at Valley Forge High School on July 28th, 29th, and 30th, and uh, it was wonderful. We had students participate in that production uh, district-wide. There were uh, kids from almost every school, and um, as you know, this is a storied uh, musical, and uh, they did a wonderful job. We have lots of uh, good attendance at every performance, and they did wonderful. So I hope you had an opportunity to see that. It was uh, a really great effort, and um, community-wide, that was a really good thing. And I'll draw your attention to this Saturday is the Safety Fair at uh, the Parma Justice Center, which is at Regency and Powers Boulevard in um, Parma. And it's a great thing for families to attend. Lots of fun stuff for kids. There'll be the canine unit there that will do a presentation. That's always a lot of fun. Um, weather permitting, they're going to have the uh, medical flight helicopter also do landing. So <laughs> that's kind of a fun thing for kids. And lots of other learning opportunities, games to play, fun giveaways, and uh, certainly a lot of great safety information uh, to be learned. Uh, for everyone. So school if you're, did you mention there's a school bus? I didn't mention there's a school bus. Wow, what a thing to leave out, huh? <laughs> There'll be a school bus there. So kids can um, uh, get onto a school bus and see what that's like, especially for the little ones that have never been on one before. And uh, so that'll be a fun thing. And uh, hopefully you can attend. It's from 11 to 2 this Saturday, August 12th, at the Parma Justice Center. Awesome. Very good. That's it. So about the sound of music. Yes. So who were the participants in this? Was it kids? Was it adults? Was it a combination thereof? The entire cast was students. The students. And I had to keep reminding myself as I watched it, I, I was there for two nights. Um, the little ones, as you know, the cast of uh, uh, Sound of Music includes all the Von Trapp children. So there were some, lots of little ones and there was an ensemble that also had little, uh, uh, little ones participating. But the ones that were playing the adult roles, Mother Abbas, Maria, Captain Von Trapp, uh, the other adults, I had to keep reminding myself that these are kids. 15-year-old kids, 16-year-old kids, 14. There were you know, lots of young kids that were playing these adult roles with these very mature voices singing songs. So, it was um, run by adults, former uh, uh, Valley Forge principal Jack Roberts was the producer of uh, the show, and Dr. Rand Laycock, many of you may know from the Parma Symphony, uh, did the orchestra uh, work for the it's show. a live orchestra, right? Oh yeah, a, a large live orchestra, which we don't usually have that many participants. Um, this was wonderful, they were right in front of the stage, did beautiful music. I'm sorry to mention that. And um, obviously, <coughs> obviously we're uh, costumers. And I'm going to give a shout out to North Olmsted High School. They, um, and I'm not sure how the connection was exactly made, but uh, they had put on The Sound of Music this past year. They loaned us all kinds of scenery and costume for this production which would have been um, much more costly for us to put on uh, and uh, much more difficult. I'm sure there's some of those things we would not have been able to accomplish, uh, largely because of the cost. But um, it was sponsored by the um, Parma City Schools Foundation. I think I failed to say that as well. So um, great production. I'm hopeful that we see more of these in the future where our whole district can It was, it was very good. Uh, yeah. very good. Yeah, so much in the next I, I wasn't sure if Mrs. Bratz was going to mention. So kindergarten kickoff is next Friday. Oh, uh, did yeah. you want to touch on that? Or? No, you could go ahead. So kindergarten yeah. kickoff is is really um, we used to do a district kickoff on a Saturday, and we decided really so that our kindergarten families could really experience sort of a, a you know, special event in the district. Home football games are always uh, special. Our consolidation has led to really increased numbers of students in each band, and so we're excited about um, you know that presence, and so. Next Friday night at six o'clock really begins some of the exhibits and some of the um, 
activities we would do with uh, incoming kindergarten students. We have approximately 600, which is really exciting. And so we hope to see all of our incoming kindergarten uh, students next Friday night. Again, kickoff begins at 6. That will include a, a walk around the track, and our cheerleaders will be there, and our band will be there. And it's really a festive atmosphere and a great way to begin uh, their journey in the Parma City Schools. Thank you, Dr. Again, the safety fair is this week? This week, this Saturday, <coughs> 11 to 2. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Right. Uh, Treasurer? I do everything. All right, so at this point, the uh, at this point, we're open the meeting to public address on tonight's board agenda meeting. So we have any requests? This all looks like. You all want to do this for the second half. For the second half, correct. Yeah. Okay. So none of those will bypass that. So I move, uh, do we have any amendments? We do. 2023-08-350.1. It was a um, transportation where we have a student we were unable to transport at Lutheran West. We thought it was Lutheran West High School. We don't transport high school kids. But Lutheran West opened a middle school for, I think it's six, seven, eight. So we would have to transport that kid, so a child, I should say that. So we have the amendment for that. Okay. So that's what I'm reading, then. I'm sorry? That's what I'm reading? Yes. So I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-346, adoption of the amendments. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-346. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-346 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-347, approval of the written record of proceedings from the July 20th, 2023 regular Board of Education meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-347. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Lucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Uh, resolution 2023-08-347 has been approved. That brings us to curriculum, Mrs. Bratz. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. I move for the adoption of resolution 2023-08-348, approval for foreign exchange student from Iceland to attend Normandy High School. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-348. <coughs> Any questions or comments from the board? I'll just say. Oh, go ahead. I think this is really exciting. I don't think we've ever had anybody from Iceland before. Mm -hmm. um, several from the European mainland, but I think this is really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. That's it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Mr. Rudo. Yes. Mr. Block. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-348 has been approved. I move for the adoption of Resolution 2023-08-349, approval of student handbook for the 2023-2024 school year. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2023-08-349. Any questions or comments from the board? Can I make a couple comments? Absolutely. A uh, couple, couple changes to our handbook that, uh, quite frankly, I think are really improvements. Um, the first, and, and you actually authorized us to, us to do this last year, uh, but it was really in the midst of the year, and we decided to wait and start fresh. But now, uh, students who miss 15 days of school at the high school level and who are 16 years uh, of age or older, we will recommend the suspension of their driver's license to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. If they have not yet attained a driver's license, um, they also can have that suspended. It would be a delay. Uh, there will be hearing with me first before we do that. So if there are some type of extenuating circumstances, we, we will certainly consider that. But you know, we talk a lot about attendance and chronic absenteeism. And you know, in, in the end, there's. In Cuyahoga County, at least, there hasn't been a whole lot of teeth in, the, in those rules. Uh, we certainly don't want to suspend people for missing school. That's kind of antithetical. Um, but there should be some type of uh, reinforcement of the importance of attending school. And so we think this will be a, a positive step. That will also apply to any suspension or expulsion for drugs or alcohol um, in, on school property. So again, just try to, trying to reinforce that you know, our mission here is education. And you know, we, we want kids coming to school. And we want them coming to school for the right reasons. 
And so we're excited about that change. The second change that I think represents a step forward is that we will have credit thresholds. Um, in the past, we had done away with credit thresholds uh, to, to be classified, uh, you know, a, a freshman, a sophomore, junior, senior, et cetera. The credit thresholds now, you will not become a sophomore until you have five credits. Now, to, to us, that might seem like common sense, but in the past, we, we had people who were clarified or classified as seniors who were sitting there with two, two credits. I mean, that, that just doesn't make any sense. So those two changes, I think, really um, will reinforce our mission and also add some clarity into you got to earn the credits if you want to be considered into the next grade. Very good, thank you. Um, Dr. Smilet, will there be an opportunity to um, message this to students and families uh, at the beginning of the year since it is a change and it's a pretty significant thing if, this sh if anything should happen with um, a student putting them in this category? The truancy piece, you I, I will message, and then the, the credit threshold high school principals will certainly reinforce. Right. Orientation, probably, right? I, I did have a question. You, the suspending of the driver's license, you said that that's not just for attendance, but that can also be for... Anything related to drugs or alcohol. alcohol right. They won't be able to get their driver's license or have it taken away. That's or correct. So the, the hearing with me, and then it, it, we, we have a, a form that the BMV has adopted, and we send that to the BMV, and quite frankly, at that point, that, that's on them. Um, we can also we have a, also have a form for reinstatement, and so you know that would again be some type of arrangement that we would reach at that hearing uh, with me. Anybody else? General call. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mr. Bond. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-349 has been approved. Unless another board member has anything to discuss regarding. Curriculum that will conclude for this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Bross. Uh, business, Mr. Ruda. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-350, declaring select pupil impractical to transport for the 2023-2024 school year. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-350. Any questions or comments from the board? I. What is this? We, we have the, the right, um, and it, it has to be a really an extenuating circumstance, some type of substantial difficulty uh, in us providing transportation to any number of, of outside the district um, locations. And so we have the right to say, you know, this isn't practical for our bus fleets to build a, a bus route or a series of bus routes to actually reach this destination. And so instead of providing transportation, we provide a stipend to the parents because we recognize that that's a hardship. Uh, that stipend ranges in, in, in dollar figures anywhere from $600 to $1,100, depending upon uh, distance. So uh, we have the ability to do that under Ohio Revised Code. And again, it, it, it's, it's a way for us to be as practical and efficient as possible as we build our bus routes. Thank you. Mr. Rudolph. Yes. Mrs. Bryce. Yes. Mrs. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Bond. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-350 has been approved. Okay, I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-350.01, declaring select people and practical to transport for the 2020. This says 2022-23 on my That's correct. Correct. Okay. 2022-23. I get. I understand it now. Uh, school year. I got a little confused. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-350.01. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call please. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Brock. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Mr. Bond. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-350.01 has been approved. Okay, I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-351, approving change order for the James E. Hanna Elementary School Abatement and Demolition Project. Second. Okay, second. Motion and a second, and then we'll get to you. Okay. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-351. Any questions or comments from the board? Something well, it obviously it can be kind of confusing to have a change order for something that's been leveled for six or eight months. Um, this is related to drainage on the property, actually. Uh, there were some complaints from uh, residents or property owners in the northwest corner of the property that 
there was a disproportionate amount of, of water uh, from the property seeping into uh, their properties. And so we worked with the city, our architect, the property owner to resolve that. Uh, we actually haven't been able to list the Hanna property until we really resolve that drainage issue. This uh, change order allows us to do that. I do want to compliment Dr. Schneider. There was an awful lot of back and forth between, again, our architect, the city, the property owner. This took a, a good four to five months to actually resolve in a way that was cost efficient. The first um, estimate was quite a bit more than we're actually paying uh, to resolve this issue. So thank you to Dr. Schneider for your diligence. Thank you. Um, we'll call this. Mr. Rudolph. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Vaught. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-351. Okay, I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-352, awarding a contract under a cooperative purchasing agreement for a parking lot expansion at Densler Elementary School. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-352. Any questions or comments from the board? Can you explain? Yeah, with, with, with the sort of the, the reorganization of the district, I mean, the, you know, Densler's going to have some more staff, a, a, a few more students, not substantial, but that parking lot has always been really difficult. Um, if you don't come at the right time, you're essentially going to take that bus loop there and embark on a, a you know, piece of the property that really isn't meant for parking. So uh, this is going to gain us approximately 40 parking spots and uh, be adjacent to the current parking lot. Uh, certainly still quite a bit of, of property uh, to the west of the parking addition, but we really need this to operate. Okay. I just wanted people to know the, the, the kids that play in that area that we're not taking away their... Like, no, there's, at, grounds, Stetzler there's is a sprawling property. There is still ample uh, space for additional purposes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Very good. Thank you. Good question. Roll call, please. Mr. Rudolph. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-352 has been approved. Okay, I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-353, authorizing purchase of welding lab gas piping system and installation. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-353. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Nucio. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes, resolution 2023-08-353 has been approved. Right. Unless another board member has anything to discuss, this will conclude business. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Fine job, Mr. Uh, that brings us off finance, Mr. Bratz. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. I move for the adoption of resolution 2023-08-354, approval of Medical Mutual of Ohio, stop loss insurance protection. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-354. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Lucio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Mr. Bob. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-354 has been approved. I move for the adoption of resolution 2023-08-355. Resolution approving Medical Mutual of Ohio Gene Therapy Plus Specific Stop Loss Rider. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-355. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Ms. Nucio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-355 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-356. Approval of renewal addendum with Medical Mutual of Ohio for employee health insurance programs. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-356. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Ms. Nucio. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mrs. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-356 has been approved. Unless another board member has anything to discuss regarding finance, this will conclude for this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Bratz. Very well done. This unfortunately brings right back to you for the legislation. <laughs> legislation. Well, the only thing that I will mention that uh, I'm sure everyone is aware that the special election on Tuesday uh, on issue one, um, it was defeated and uh, by about a 57-43 margin, something like that. So um, there will not be changes to the Constitution um, as a result of that. Uh, that's the only thing 
they're on break over the summer, so there's not as much uh, activity as uh, during the year. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Uh, human resources, Mr. Schwartz. I move to adopt the resolution 2023-08-357, approval of the following certificated exhibits, confirmation of certificated appointments, confirmation of certificated replacements, confirmation of stipend amounts, confirmation of supplemental appointments, and confirmation of substitute teacher appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-357. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Lucio? Mrs. Schwartz? Yes. Mrs. Brotz? Yes. Mr. Rudolph? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-357 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-358, approval of re revised administrative salary schedule, salary schedule uh, six, nine. nine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Salary Schedule uh, 10 and Classified Salary Schedule A. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2023-08-358. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call, Mr. Lucille. Mr. Schwartz, did you have something? Uh, yes. Mrs. Brotz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? No. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-358 has been approved. I move to adopt Resolution 2023-08-359, approval of the following classified exhibits, confirmation of classified appointments slash replacements, confirmation of change of classified assignments, and confirmation of classified resignations. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2023-08-359. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Lucio? Mrs. Schwartz? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-359 has been approved. I move to adopt Resolution 2023-08-360, approval of revised salary schedule for high school event workers. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-360. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Ms. Nucio? Ms. Short? Yes. Mrs. Brotz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-360 has been approved. Move to adopt resolution 2023-08-361, approval of revised classified salary schedule for substitute employees. Oh, second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-361. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Nucio? Mrs. Schwartz? Yes. Mrs. Brotz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? No. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-361 has been approved. Move to adopt resolution 2023-08-362. Resolution to abolish the position administrative specialist of enrollment and recruitment and suspend the contract of the employee holding the position. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-362. Any questions or comments from the board? So many kind of ones. Absolutely. Uh, part of what we always seek to create is clarity in how we operate and with some personnel changes and, and just um, really some changes in, in some of our district priorities. We've, we've lost some of that clarity uh, in our enrollment and communications aspects and so we are abolishing three positions, specifically reinstating three that we think uh, have more specific job descriptions to align with our priorities. Uh, these are not added additions, they're really clarifications. Uh, I'm sorry, added additions is redundant and I apologize for that. Um, this is not an increase in payroll, this is not uh, you know, meant to in any way uh, change how we operate other than to add clarity to what these folks do on a daily basis um, in our enrollment, communications, uh, you know, community outreach positions. Thank you. Uh, roll call please. Mrs. Schwartz? Yes. Mrs. Brotz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-362 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-363, resolution to abolish the position administrative specialist of written communications and suspend the contract of the employee holding the position. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-363. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Lucio? This is short. Yes. This is Ross. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mr. Bond. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-363 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-364, resolution to abolish the position administrative specialist of broadcast communications and suspend the contract of the employee holding the position. Second. We have a second. Uh, we, I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-364. Any questions or comments from the board? Saying no, Ms. Nusio? Mrs. Short? Yes. Mrs. Rods? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-364 has been approved. Move to adopt resolution 2023-08-365, creation of administrative specialist for family and civic engagement position and adoption of job description. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-365. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Nusio? Mrs. Short? Yes. Mrs. Brads? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-365 has been approved. Move to adopt resolution 2023-08-366, creation of administrative specialist for the community outreach position and adoption of job description. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-366. Do you have any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Mr. Short. Yes. Mrs. Bratz. Yes. Mr. Ruda. Yes. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Resolution 2023-08-366 has been approved. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-367, creation of administrative specialist for enrollment and community engagement position and adoption of job description. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-367. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Ms. Lucio? Mrs. Short? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Resolution 2023-08-367 has been approved. Unless another board member has anything to discuss, this concludes Human Resources. Thank you. Uh, this brings us to policies. Mr. Short? I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-368, approval of technical policy changes to policy 8710, insurance policy 8760, student accident insurance. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-368. <clears throat> Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, Ms. Nusio? Mrs. Schwartz? Yes. Mr. Ruda? Yes. Mrs. Bratz? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes, resolution 2023-08-368 has been approved. Uh, the following is the first reading. They will um, they'll be on the August 24th agenda for our consideration. First reading of the following revised policies. Policy 7540.02, Web Accessibility Content Apps and Services. Policy 7540.03, <coughs> Student Technology Acceptable Use and Safety. Policy 7540.04, Staff Technology Acceptable, Acceptable Use and Safety. Policy 8420, Emergency Situations at School. And unless another board member has anything to discuss, this concludes policies. Thank you, Mr. Short. So, uh, information requested by board members. Do you want to talk about this? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, this was just um, something we asked for the organization of, our, of my office. And what, what's the duties of all the people in the office? Mm -hmm. So, I can tell the board members it's, it's just a flow chart. The flow chart. And the first page shows how long the person has been in the position. A lot of people in my department are relatively new to their position. Right. Um, but that happens with retirements and resignations and just the nature of the business, I guess. Right. If you have any questions on that, just let me know. You want those questions now? Yeah, now, to be later. I was just wondering, I'm gonna read it over first. <coughs> All right, I'll contact you about questions. Okay. All right, thank you, thank you for putting it together. Yes. Thank you, Pam. Steve, would you like me to explain my vote? Your vote, you could have done that at that point. I was trying, yeah, but oh. it was, 
went quick. You wanted to explain a vote that we yes, why why I voted no on those on those two policies yeah. or not the policies in HR in human resources. Human resources. So way far back in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you'd like to go on the usual. Yeah, I've it should have been done right now. I know it. it That's okay. It went right out. Well, then roll. Didn't have a, didn't have a chance. Um, the reason why I did was knowing that we're facing a deficit five years from now and doing everything we can do to close the gap. Even though people are deserving of raises and all that, I feel adding to the baseline of our budget when we know when we don't know if we have, <coughs> if we will be able to afford it five years from now, whatever. I don't think it's prudent at this time. Especially, we're, we're going to the ballot in November to ask for renewal of levies. And for me, it was hard to say, please renew this levy. But I just said yes to, even though the races are not very, they're not large, it's just principle wise, it was hard for me to add to that baseline budget knowing that there's turmoil in year five. That's why I did it. So it was nothing personal to the people. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, so quick retort. Um, Sean, yes. the, uh, were these raises somehow worked into our five-year forecast? They were worked into the five-year forecast. Um, you take the baseline of certified and classified and put the percentage raises into them. Also, what Mr. Arruda was saying, if it had this not passed, it would have reduced deficit in year five. So I get what he's saying, but it's also worked into the budget forecast. Yes, I understood that. Yeah, I just was clarifying for yes, everybody else. You're fine. That wasn't in the conversation. Okay, very good. Thank you. And uh, anything else? This brings us to public participation. At this point, we have the need to public address the board with comments or, and or concerns. We have four such requests. So the request uh, forms were completed and submitted. What happened? Just she just put a microphone. Oh, put a microphone or something. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm just like, I just happened. Uh, so request to be heard forms were completed and submitted in person to the administrative secretary prior to the start of the meeting. All statements are shall be directed to the board president. And as per policy 0169.1, comments that are repetitive obscene, disparaging, abusive, irrelevant, and or comments that, are con that constitute a threat will not be tolerated and the speaker will be asked to stop speaking and or to leave the meeting. Uh, please note that various board policies exist which set forth uh, processes and procedures to be used in investigating and addressing personnel issues and cannot be addressed in public. As per, as per board policies, we may not be able to respond directly or to address some issues at this time. If information is not readily available, we will respond at our next regular meeting. Three minutes of a lot of per speaker. Please remember to state your name and address for the record. And would Anthony Biasiata please step to the microphone? Is this the microphone? That apparently is the microphone. It's the microphone. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Don't need a microphone, but that's, that's well, the microphone. Anthony Biasiata. Welcome, Welcome to the Thank you for having me. Anthony Biasi at 1227 Rockside Road. I'll be brief today. Um, I'm glad to see the operating renewals on the November ballot and let this be my official endorsement of those. Uh, I've always felt the operating is uh, the most important. It's how we pay our teachers, coaches, or support staff and provide activities and curriculum for our children. So I uh, urge everyone to vote yes on these renewals in November. And uh, I look forward to our very next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Kuzma, please step forward. Thank you, Kevin Kuzma. 3160 Hetzel Drive, Department City Councilman Board 6. I've mentioned to a couple of the members of the board about a geese issue at Green Valley Elementary. Um, it's been ongoing for a while. Um, some recent events have spurred some arguments among neighbors with some geese deterrence that are creating noise violations and citations and complaints 
with other neighbors, um, but they all go back to the same issue, geese. Um, so anything the city can do to help the school board eliminate the geese population at Green Valley, get rid of the pond there, dogs to deter them, I'll go up at night and fence all the geese in. If you give me the fence, I'll do anything to help the people on Pleasant Valley there, but I uh, would just ask for your help in this matter. Have we mentioned this? Did you mention this to me? I'm not, I'm not recalling it. But we know we talked about yeah, it. We talked about it in the business. Oh, yeah, yeah with Carl. All right. Well, I just I was confused. You don't look at me when you said it. I, I, said yeah, I got to address the, the yes, president. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. I appreciate that. <laughs> but it looked like we had talked about it, is what I'm saying. Um, so there is a pond at Green Valley, right? Yes. And, which is going to attract geese and ducks and wildlife that's uh, true. And which uh, teachers utilize that pond to instruct, like it's a lot, it's a lab area, right? It's a science lab area. I do know that geese are a nuisance, uh, but we can look into see what we can do to deter them and try to get them off that property. That'd be great, really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Cool, thank you. All right. Lily McKinney. You don't want you don't want, you want me to read this? You don't want to speak? No. You said a question. It's a follow up question. Do you do you still want me to read it? Or are you good? No, it's a follow up to what you said. Oh you want to follow up to it? Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll do so. I think when Quentin speaks, there'll be a follow up to this question. I'm oh, sorry, I can't hear you. I said when Quentin speaks, there'll be a follow up to this question. He's gonna speak uh, next. Oh, 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 before I start, uh, my name is Quentin Lawman, 6487 Westminster Drive. Um, uh, the geese thing, uh, there's a company that has dogs that humanely scare the geese off. Uh, my company uses it, so if you guys want information on that, I can get it. That'd be great. Thank uh, you. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the decision to arm staff. Um, Initially, I wasn't clear on the security. I appreciate the opening comments, but from the opening comments, with all due respect, it sounds like you're just gonna do it anyway. Um, I don't mean that to sound rude, uh, but this feels like a major decision that we should have public discourse and debate on. Um, there is a lot of data out there to suggest that this is not uh, actual effective deterrent. Uh, the journey of, uh, about the Journal of American Medical Association put out a peer-reviewed study in 2021, for example, that showed that armed deterrence actually increased body counts during active shooter situations. So uh, I'm wondering what kind of data was gathered by the board and by whatever consultants you're using and who those consultants were to uh, make this decision. Sorry about speaking fast. But, uh, and I don't, I've never done this before, so I don't know if I pause for remarks or. Do you want remarks? <laughs> sure. Let him finish his three minutes and then yeah. we'll answer any of those questions. Yeah. Sure. Um, I also have a couple more practical concerns. Um, I would imagine the arming security staff with, uh, and I don't mean to denigrate anyone, but I don't know what their training is like, I don't know what their experience is like, and arming them might affect the district liability, which will increase our costs. Um, the training that, that, that is required to be effective in a situation like that. I come from a family of law enforcement and uh, professional security consultants, by the way, uh, so I'm getting some of this secondhand. Uh, but I am by no means personally a professional. Uh, but there is, uh, <laughs> there is concern about proper training, which is expensive, proper equipment, which is expensive. Uh, I'm wondering where this uh, money is coming from and if alternatives have been considered. And if so, what were those alternatives? Um, there is, let me pull up my notes, I'm sorry. Uh, there is also, there it is. Of course, now my phone's not loading. Um, <laughs> uh, there, there are also like a lot of, a host of practical matters that are, that are more nuanced. Like, uh, I know from my family in law enforcement and military that carrying around a cheap gun is just as dangerous as carrying around as, as an untrained person. You drop it, it could go off. Uh, having the wrong kind of ammunition uh, could result in innocent bystanders being hurt as it goes through walls. Um, 
it's not like the movies. Bullets go right through brick walls, like butter, if they're jacketed rounds. Um, the uh, sorry. I'm just letting you know. Uh, and then my, my last one is really just around how the requirements, what are the requirements of those individuals? The 20 hours of unspecified training by the state is laughable and not specific. Okay, very good. Thank you. And we do sure. have some response for that. Yeah, I'm going to take care of that. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, I think your first question, uh, you know, what data, and, and in all reality, uh, this was a clear recommendation of our chiefs of police. We do work very clearly uh, or very closely with them. Uh, and they are 100% uh, in favor of us arming uh, our, our small security team. And so that, that's the consultant we work with. I'm sure there are different studies, and, and studies are very plentiful. Um, and so we can certainly you know, continue to look at that data, but we, we, our MO, so to speak, has really been to rely on, on the expertise of our law enforcement partners. Um, secondly, in terms of, of you know, training and, and specifics, um, we, ag we agree that you know, the 24 hours as you know, outlined is really a rudimentary uh, piece and, and I guess to answer all of your questions, including the, you know, how does the public participate? Yeah, as I explained, you know, the resolution was step one and so we still have two policy readings and so th these are things that you can continue to comment on um, at our board meetings, uh, both, you know, <coughs> there'll be an agenda item next time. Uh, I also, as I explained before about sort of not communicating w well enough on the front end, um, you know, tonight parents are going to get an email explaining exactly what steps we're taking. When we go into the policy, it's not going to be that, oh, I have to scroll through board docs to look for these answers. It's going to be very, very specifically spelled out in terms of who, what, where, when, what training they have, how it's ongoing training, how we're looking at mental health situations, um, how we're looking at ongoing drug testing, all of, all of those issues to assure safety. Um, but I, I do want to come back to the, to, the, to the piece that this was a clear recommendation of our, of our chiefs of police. Um, and, and so that, that's really been sort of our, our big rock in terms of what we're working from. But it is an ongoing conversation. We will continue to clarify all of the questions that you've had. Am I allowed a quick response? If I could um, I, I appreciate that and I appreciate the clarity. Uh, again, with respect, I come from a family of law enforcement. And, and I, I agree, everybody's heart seems in the right place. We want to protect our kids. That's why I'm here talking. I don't believe anyone here wants to put them in danger. I just want to make sure we're making an informed decision. Um, I don't know what the qualifications of the chiefs of police are here at Parma. I, I know we have a very good police department, and uh, I have nothing against them. But I know that in these situations, the federal law enforcement is called in, F FBI has specialized training, and I'm curious about you know, what their background is in these. These are unique situations that require a special set of skills. Um, and, and I'd be interested in talking to them. Uh, I don't know if there's a public forum where they'll be included, but I'd like to recommend that. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Uh, I did want to introduce our, our director of security, uh, Master Joe Ridgely. And again, I mean no offense. I appreciate what you do. I'd <laughs> 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 like to know, but we did have a meeting prior sure. to our meeting which I think that discussed parameters and, and things. So that yeah. I think as we go forward, it'll. it'll yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the vagaries are what concerns me. Um, I, I know quite. I know a bit about this stuff. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And, and, uh, uh, Good name to go with it, moment. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, there's a funny story about my brother arresting a drunk guy with that. Um, but anyway, uh, I do appreciate the time. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming on. Yeah. Everybody wants to say something. Everybody wants a response. So we're going to get two responses from these ladies. Oh, sure. Oh, you can sit, whatever you like. Um, I, I, I am. I, my husband's also. Awesome. My husband's a police officer. I'm a retired dispatcher of 19 years. And I'm, I'm also. Um, I'm actually active shooter trained. Oh. Um, so I got the concerns, but I just wanted to let you know that one of the votes came from, did come from experience. Um, I also have a child in the schools that we're talking about, mm -hmm. and then in a couple of years I'll have a second. So not only was I making a decision based on um, experience, but also based on my, you know, my children, who obviously I would protect to the but most. So if I thought that any any part of where we were going with this was dicey, then it, I wouldn't have had a yes vote. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for coming and expressing your concern. I share many of those same concerns. This is a very big deal um, for parents, community, staff, all of us to consider. 
and I know Mr. Ridgely has done a lot of research into how this could possibly roll out in our district should we get to the point where we approve policy to do so. And I'll just throw in two, I have a law enforcement, not myself, but I lived with a guy for 40 some years that uh, is a retired Cleveland police commander and a kid that's a special agent for Secret Service. So we, talk, Secret Service, yeah. we talk a little uh, uh, law enforcement stuff in our house as well. And um, I'm kind of a safety geek, attend, I'm involved in some other safety organizations as well as attend safety stuff. And so it's really important to me as well. And uh, I, um, I guess I'll, I, I hope it gives you some confidence that we are trying to do great due diligence um, and improve the security in our buildings, not reduce it. You know, so we're trying very hard. This was the first step in a road to get to this possibility. So we'll see what happens. But boy, we appreciate your input. Thank you very much for coming and sharing with us. And I am confident everybody's trying to do the right thing. Right. But when I talked to my brother who's in the Secret Service and secures buildings for like the president, um, he was like, unless they're highly trained, that might be a bad plan. So that, that was his short version of his comment. Um, he's not against it, but it's that it's that I don't know uh, I don't know enough to feel confident as a parent. Uh, my son's entering kindergarten this year. Um, I think when we hear 24 hours, that like to can you just speak again? Can you just give that statistic on what how much somebody that comes out of police academy and then goes to the road? How many hours? Well, the minimum state requirement for armed staff in schools is 20 hours, uh, according to what I read. 24. Is it 24? 24. It's 24. It's 24. Um, Apologies. Yeah, more but, uh, can you but can you just speak to how much a road patrol officer has when they come out? So straight out of the police academy, um, the firearm portion of it mm -hmm. is 60 hours. Right. 60 hours contains the rifle training, contains shotgun training, and handgun training, um, and a little bit more training when fire from the car, things like that. Mm -hmm. We, as a district. We're not even looking at rifle, shotguns, things like that. So it reduces those hours. Um, we have been, I think it's public knowledge right now that we have been in training all week with the three community police departments. So we are trying to always step up that piece, right? So 24 hours is the asset program from the state, right? Plus the ongoing training that we have with the police department of the co-op training, right? So we were probably neck and neck with somebody that's walking out of the academy right now as well. Right, okay. But there are different localities and requirements around police officers and to training varies and does it include the uh, shoot, no shoot scenarios? Does it include, those are the kinds of things I'm curious about. I, I am a pretty decent shot, but I would not carry my gun at a school because I don't feel like I am qualified to do so. Uh, even though I, I was taught from a very young age. Again, a lot of family and law enforcement. Um, so those are the things that I'm concerned with. Like, it's one thing to be a good shot, in other words. It's quite a different thing to know when to use it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, that's okay. Right. Well, I was I, just trying to find a spot for you. Just sure. Sure. I do appreciate it. Yeah, Thank we you. appreciate your time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Mr. Ridgely. And ladies, for your comments. All right. Do uh, you have a follow-up question you wanted to say, or are we good? We're good. Okay. All right. All right, so we don't need executive sessions. So we're going to um, move on here. I move to adopt resolution 2023-08-370 to adjourn this meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2023-08-370. Roll call, Ms. Lucio. Mr. Vaughn. Yes. Mrs. Brad. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Mrs. Short. Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for attending. <laughs>